What is one country that you will never visit again? Egypt. Cairo looks, slash is a war zone. Turrets on street corners. Tanks. Soldiers with automatic weapons everywhere. We had an armed police officer on the tour bus. Road scholar and nothing against them, they are a great company to travel with. Police escort everywhere. Bomb dogs, a guy with a mirror looking under the bus for bombs. Cairo is dirty, littered, and the poverty is staggering. The food was mad best as we could not travel outside the hotel or tour path to eat. It was blisteringly hot. The camel guys at the pyramids were mean to all of the women and the animals with children working there as well. The Egyptian museum was a disgrace to the country. Poorly organized bad labels, no security, priceless textiles, parchment, leathers, etc. Jumbled in cases exposed to the air, heat, hands, no AC. The only thing well cared for and secured were Tooting Carmen's artifacts. It's a spectacular resource and collection and so badly cared for. With no curation, the new ones just opened. I sure hope it's better. Once you've seen one temple, one hieroglyphic, you've truly seen them all. It's all about tourist money and the street vendors were relentless and scary. Even on a nice open boat ride down the Nile, kids paddled up to the boat on wooden doors selling cheap crap or just begging. Never again. This just reminded me how when I was a kid I had the mummy on videotape. I watched it relentlessly and I did not want to go to Egypt ever because I thought the scarab beetles actually crawled under your skin and killed you. No offense but screw the Bahamas. It's a tourist trap and not a very good one at that. More like a third world country trying to play a capitalism. I'll just put it out there none of the thoughts on these places are mine. The Gambia in West Africa. I've traveled to over 40 countries in my life including Egypt, Morocco, India and Cameroon and the Gambia is by far the worst of the bunch. When there in 2009 with my girlfriend, we were 20 at the time. It is by far the most corrupt country in the world. Let me start by saying it's a beautiful country and the people there are the friendliest people you could wish to meet, but the way they are treated by the government is disgusting. We met a local guy there called Jimmy Brave who lived in a hut on the beach with his young family. Amazing guy cooked us dinner every night and never wanted anything but friendship in return. We gave him a fair bit of money on our last day more than we usually would because he genuinely didn't want it. Anyway, one night we decided we wanted to check out the nightlife in the tourist area where it was safe so my friend Jimmy agreed to meet us by the hotel entrance at 7 p.m. Then we would take him for dinner and hit a few bars. We got to the front of the hotel just before 7 p.m. and Jimmy wasn't there. We waited around an hour still no Jimmy. At this point we assumed he had forgot so we went back to our rear exit onto the beach and to his hut. His wife said he had gone to meet us over an hour ago. We searched for about four hours and still couldn't find him so his wife suggested we call the local tourist police. We called and they confirmed he had been arrested for loitering in front of the hotel. We agreed to meet the head of police and arrived at the police station. This is where it got shady. We went in and sat at a desk in an empty dark room. A big African guy in army clothing came in and sat in front of us. The guy had two cigs in his mouth smoking both at the same time. He slams his fist on the table and starts shouting at us demanding 500 pound. Probably a year's wage over there to release Jimmy. Obviously we refused after about an hour of arguing and various threats against us. We were a young white couple at the time and they assumed we were wealthy. We managed to agree on 70 pound and a 200 pack of cigarettes. We paid and we were told to wait outside. We were out there for over two hours and they brought the wrong guy out. We only knew our friend is Jimmy Brave. Not his real name so this proved challenging. Anyway I was invited in to show the police who Jimmy was and had to pick him out of a huge cell filled with at least 300 people. Some who were very close to death. Anyway Jimmy spotted me straight away and we had him released. When we go far enough from the police station Jimmy broke down in tears. I've never seen a grown man cry like this in my life. He lifted up his top and he had several large open wounds where they had been whipping him in the cell and the police truck. We immediately took him to the hospital where he remained for two days at a cost of 240-ish pounds. The hospital doctors were great. So bear in mind he was beaten, whipped around 50 times hard just for waiting outside our hotel to take us for drinks. And he was only released because we paid. If we had never turned up, he said he would have died in there. 
They don't release the criminals until somebody pays the corrupt police chief. There were literally people dying in front of my eyes in the cell. I've always swore if I became rich, I will be going back there just to release as many of these people as I possibly can. Except any dangerous people who actually deserve to be there, obviously. This wasn't the only corruption from the police we saw while there. It's just the main point. We see police walking down the street slapping women and kids for absolutely no reason. One cop told me he would murder anyone I point out right now for 50 pound. He had an AK. I saw people dragged in the back of trucks never to be seen again just for asking people for a bottle of water. I feel really sorry for the majority of people in the Senegambia as they are amazing happy people who have to live in constant fear of the police and government. I should say Jimmy managed to move to the UK in 2016 with the help of me and another British family he met in Gambia. He now lives in Stoke-on-Trent, which is a few hours from where I live, but we talk on Facebook regularly and meet up once or twice a year. Haiti went on a medical mission. One day was spent at the beach. We got caught in the middle of a protest. I was groped. Several other people were punched. It was terrifying. They only stopped when one of our translators yelled that we were medical workers. We only ended up spending one hour at the beach so we wouldn't end up driving back through the same area at night. When we reached that area, it was clear of people. A few over 10 vehicles were on fire. A UN detail was hanging out in a big armored vehicle with a very large gun on top. I can't imagine how bad it is now with all of the civil unrest. As of current year and my understanding of the geopolitical and situation that is taking place in Haiti, it has gotten significantly worse. Jamaica went for a chill vacation with my then college girlfriend and were very turned off by being asked if we wanted to buy weed every 20 steps. Despite popular misconceptions, weed was quite illegal in Jamaica at the time. I smoked at home in the US occasionally but wasn't into this trip and didn't want to risk getting it rested in a foreign country. Three days in and they're wearing us down so we consider buying a joint. That same day a tour guide on our river tour warns us without prompting that dudes will sell you weed and then cross the street to tell the cops for an informant fee. That you've got weed. After which you get tossed in Jamaican jail and have to bribe your way out. Also the food was mad. Japan. I'm fat black and none too cute. All the people spit at me, no one would sit next to me on the train or would make it painfully obvious they were uncomfortable during rush hours. Young people, adults, teens, older kids had no filter and would happily laugh at me, make faces or even throw things at me. Though that was only in Shibuya. It was hard for me to get work as a teacher even with my training and credentials because I had to have my picture and no one wanted a black and ugly teacher. I felt like a monster the entire time and slowly shut myself away until I had quit my jobs that I only left at night to get food from a convenience store. The last time I went outside during the day in Japan I was going to cancel my cell phone plan before I left and their kids and teens pointed and laughed before running away screaming I was a monster. I was mortified when the adults looked at me and I could hear them go well look at her. It took me four months back home to leave my apartment during the day in the States so I didn't go thinking I'd be loved just thought I'd have a nice experience in my 20s. Japan is a modern beautiful country with wonderful people but I just didn't get lucky enough to meet them. My pet peeve is when I mention this. People go oh Japan was great to me you must have done something wrong. I'm glad you had a good time, I hope the next person has a great time too, but this happened to be my experience. That's all. Dubai. While interesting it's really just a total rip-off of Western culture. I flew 12 hours from New York City only to be surrounded by Cheesecake Factory, Wendy's, California Pizza Kitchen, etc. No real culture. Isn't Dubai like a relatively new city by like age standards? It's like decades old. I know that the original Dubai was like a fishing village or some crap, I think, but then obviously they modernized and now they're like one of the wonders of the world apparently that loads of people love to visit as tourists. Cambodia, but only because I was mugged in Phnom Penh. Well, it's a holiday in Cambodia. The self-care, but it's life. It's a holiday in Cambodia. Don't forget to pack our wife. I apologize. I heard Cambodia and I went, yeah, dead Kennedys. Venezuela. I visited my extended family there near Caracas as a young child and had an amazing time but things there have really gone south since then. Pretty much all my family members that were there have left for obvious reasons. China. I had to go there a couple of times for work but the feeling of being surveilled, the pollution, the horrible pedestrian experience and getting scammed by a cabbie turned me off. 
Thailand, when there during the coup in 2013, got stuck, too much prostitution and child smut and prostitution and the open for me. Also being there during the coup and getting a crazy flu and hospitalized in Bangkok, frickin' sucked. Love my Thai friends but Bangkok and Bataya are just too crazy for me. Singapore. Great company and friendly people. Except on the first day I was in a sports bar beaten up. My assalto was a man which I later learned was the boyfriend to a woman I asked to dance. Sucker punched and went to the floor immediately. Getting kicked, people intervened after what felt like a minute when he picked up a chair to continue. That per se would not have been a reason not to visit it anymore. That's what followed. The bartender told me I should leave ASAP and sleep it off. After multiple hits against the head or he will get the police involved and tell them I started the fight. Since I suspected a concussion I called 911. I fled the bar and called 911 on the streets. There the bartender or manager followed me with two big employees of his and tried to get me with slight force in his back office to talk so I don't ruin my life and that of my family in a lawsuit. I actually had to shower on a full street something silly like emergency help help multiple times at some point so he and his men would leave me alone. It was clearly meant as imposing and I am very thankful I didn't follow him in his office with his two strong men. Eventually the ambulance came. I got first aid and made my statement while I heavily tried to get any information off the police and visited them in my embassy multiple times there I noticed they had no interest in following my case. There were multiple security cameras, a bar, and a street full of witnesses in a lively and well-esteemed shopping-slash-entertainment area. Just no interest of the police to get bad reputation for their city-state, I suppose. Singapore has a very low crime rate, but I'm quite sure my attack never showed up in any statistic whatsoever. Emails and follow-ups by myself, insurance, and my local police were ignored just dead silent and condolence from my embassy. Still have minor sight issues on my left eye and very minor headaches after four years. Yeah, let this be a reminder or maybe even a note to people who don't know but one bad hit in the head can really mess up or just completely ruin someone's life. Which is why one-hit KO challenges are stupid and cruel and you're a dirt. Bag if you do them. UAE Dubai frickin' sucks built on slavery, arrogant money, and power-drawn locals. If you're a chick without a man nearby the men aggressively flirt. Read the golf news if you want to see horror stories of how they treat migrant workers. You couldn't pay me to live in that overblown crap hole of big empty buildings. Afghanistan I would love to go back and be a tourist, but I don't think I will ever have the opportunity nor would it be responsible now that I have a family to vacation there. The country is absolutely beautiful and the weather was nice. The people are one of the kindest most respectful cultures I have ever had the pleasure of working with full of beautiful traditions and fantastic food. Sadly, they have their issues and it wouldn't be wise to risk going there as a tourist. A real shame too because I'd love to visit the resorts in Bamiyan and go skiing and snowboarding there too. Qatar, I worked there for 15 months. Appalling treatment of workers. Very, very hot. Terrible food and the whole country is a building site getting ready for the World Cup next year. After that, the country will be empty. Nothing to do apart from work and shopping. Iran, I'm half Iranian, but I was born and raised in Europe. I went a few times between 10 and 13 years old. And the last time I went, I started feeling the weight of being a woman. I was hanging out with my aunt in the capital. I turned my head around and my scarf fell off. I had full sleeve coverage in the middle of the summer. Immediately, the moral police circled us and asked why my head was uncovered. My aunt told them off, but that really stayed with me. It was over 15 years ago, and I can't imagine my grown adult self fearing the police because my headscarf won't stay in place. I do miss my family, and I have amazing memories of visiting the historical sites, but I refuse to suppress my womanhood and self in order to be there. Australia. As an American, I was made to feel unwelcome on a daily and hourly basis, and I'm a worldly American who never had problems with anyone, even Parisians. I was there for two months and was subjected to things like being called a seppo which is extremely insulting and rude hardly a day went by where I didn't hear that word. And when you take exception to it they gaslight you like you're too uptight and you can't take a joke and you're the problem. And I got made fun of for holding my utensils a certain way while eating. People down there I found were rubes with no manners add to the daily generalized ignorant questions why do all Americans or you frickin' Americans someone actually asked me why do all Americans phone numbers start with 555 I am not making that up then you turn on the news or a talk show and listen to more snide remarks it doesn't strike me as a good deal to spend all that money to be subjected to unprovoked.
hostility on a daily basis. I would not recommend that any American go down there. See, I've one of most definitely going to Australia one day I have wanted to ever since I play goddamn Tally the Tasmanian Tiger on PlayStation 2. Actually, the more I think about it, I did just have a general fascination with Australia as a kid. Anyway, if anything, let this story be a lesson that no matter who you are and where you go, there is always somewhere where you can be discriminated against. I flew into Germany on my way to Denmark and had a six-hour wait at the Frank first train station before catching my bus to Copenhagen. I don't know if it was just the particular area of Frankfurt I was in, but it was mad depressing the number of homeless people made San Francisco look good and so many of them were harassing me for money and clearly suffering from illegal substance addiction. A woman followed me for four blocks trying to proposition me to pay her $20 didn't see any food that looked appetizing people were very cold and unfriendly, and the music was corny beyond belief. Germany is another place I'd like to visit, but it's mostly because I heard they have like the biggest indoor water park in the world and it looked awesome. China I made the mistake of going to Shanghai while being of Polynesian descent and was really taken aback by the open racism. I had my hair pulled some businesses wouldn't serve me if I went without a Chinese person and people looked at me like I was disgusting it ruined many a picture comments were also made I really thought that Shanghai would be okay because it's such an international city but damn was I mistaken America don't feel like I really have a reason to return and everything just feels too big to me don't have family there thought it was grand and can see why. Some people love visiting but just not my. Cupper especially in the summer meanwhile I'd love to go back to Italy again but go further north this time yeah I can definitely see why people would have that impression of America for sure Narnia went with some siblings my younger brother hit it off with an older woman but she turned out being a real female dog ruining the trip for everyone also the animals talk 3 out of 10 yeah I know that one's not for real I just thought it was kind of funny I hope that I never have to go back to. Jordan I am a 60 year old woman and was traveling with another woman my age about 4 years ago we were so excited to see Petra and to learn about the culture instead we had more than one sexist male tour guide who was verbally anti-Western in Europe okay I can understand politics for sure however we American and Europeans according to one guide are responsible for men turning gay and that Jordanian men would never gay until they saw such things on American and European television oh another. One were filthy because we have dogs in our houses yet another said that he'd never let his wife wear makeup we wear makeup and we were traveling just two gal pals anyway the food sucks their national dish is some slop called mansef it tastes like a sheep died of old age and was then slow boiled in poor quality yogurt for two days I then met up with some very cool Palestinians in Hebron after that they invited me to lunch at their home and I was shocked at the delicious food I told them that I just came from Jordan and they laughed and said that they all agreed that Jordanian food is garbage. I don't know, I'm looking at the mansef. It looks all right. It looks like it could be nice. It's not the most appealing thing. But I like the bed of rice. It's on not a country, but just one city Malmo. I spent about one month and a half in Sweden a few years ago and visited many cities and loved every minute of that trip. However, something about Malmo made me feel uneasy. I felt like I was in a dystopian novel in which everyone said we were in Sweden, but it did not feel like Sweden, Brazil. This won't be a popular response, I suppose, but it is based. On my personal experience after a month of being warned that we could be robbed on the bus, the street killed on the beads, etc. I ended my time there held hostage by two escaped criminals. That's enough for me. I did not enjoy my stay in Morocco. We went during Ramadan and had rocks thrown at us and people following us down the street yelling at us. We also couldn't be seen eating by anyone or we would get the nastiest looks ever. No intention of ever going back. I personally have no intention of and don't really understand why other people go to countries that are so controlled and influenced by religion they are quite frankly usually the most miserable places in the goddamn world India I'm sure some parts and people are lovely but my wife got grabbed so much in front of me without any concern that it ruined it for us India is another place I would definitely like to visit one day mostly because I freaking love Indian food but also because like yeah it's pretty goddamn beautiful place last Vegas for me very overrated hotels are very similar expensive same food in each hotel and casino too hot in the day so busy at night TV has definitely glamorized it